Hey, how are you doing? This is Sylvia Kalunji of Women and Digital Inclusion, also known as Wardin. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a Gmail account from scratch and some essential interface settings like composing an email, sending an email, and sending an email, deleting an email, forwarding. What does the Gmail interface look like? Some are some of the things you don't see. We're going to learn how to forward an email and such stuff. And if this is your first time here on this channel, Welcome to the Wording channel, where we focus on things like how to demystify and simplify uh, technology and the digital stuff for you. If this is your first time here, we simplify it for you, the busy mama, the auntie, the grandma, the grandi, the young person trying to understand Gmail. So consider subscribing if technology is bullying you and you want to show it a finger. <laughs> so without further shenanigans, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to head on over to, you're going to head on over to your uh, laptop or your PC. For you who wants to, who is wanting to create your account on a tablet or a mobile phone, I'm going to share a, a video from YouTube that will help you do that as well. It's not made by me, but I don't really like uh, reinventing the wheel. I love leverage and I definitely know that. Consider subscribing. If technology is bullying you, don't forget to hit the bell. Let's get to gmail.com. So you're going to open a browser and type in that browser gmail.com. So today we are using Google Chrome to do this. It's also part of the Google uh, interface and uh, ecosystem and it's easier. Let's go and do that and create a Google account for you. This is what that looks like. Okay, so what you're looking for is that that says create an account because you don't want to enter an email or a phone or a phone number because that is for people who already have an account. So you're going to click on create account and you can say for yourself or your child or your business. It doesn't really matter. You know, you're, you're actually creating an account that you are going to use. Then you are going to type in your first name and your last name. So I'm going to type in my last name. I'm going to just say uh, Pauline. And I'm just going to put their blogs. Pauline blogs. Okay. Um, what's the username? Well, your username is going to be... Uh, you, you, most people say Pauline blogs at gmail.com. Let's try that and see what, what, what comes up. You'll be surprised that... Uh, it might tell you that it is, it's taken, but it is not taken. Can you imagine? Pauline blogs at gmail.com is not taken. So that is really, really very interesting because usually Google will also make suggestions for you right under here what you could uh, what you could do. Uh, you can also say Pauline blogs 22, and that means you probably are 22 years old. You have someone in your life who's 22. 22 is a special number to you, or you did it and you created it in 2022. We're going to leave it at Pauline blogs 22 at gmail.com. Now, you are going to enter your uh, password. Now, the trick is you want to enter your password that is very strong. You want to, st to use a strong password that has at least 8 to 12 uh, letters, numbers, characters. In fact, they tell you what to do right here. So, we're going to, so don't use Paul in blogs again because it's now already part of your username. And if you want to see what you're typing so that you can actually confirm what is you're typing and you, because you're going to have to confirm what you're typing, you, you tick that box here. That little box there allows you to see what you're typing. So we're going to say uh, Oibo capital letters, characters, numbers, and, uh, and, and, and a mix of letters and numbers and a symbol right there. So we're going to confirm what we just typed. And it must match. If it doesn't match, it won't let you go past. And then you click on next. Now, why should your password be strong? And why should it be some kind of thing that you should remember? And it should be something uh, that's not related to your family or your, your home or whatever. It's because people are always trying to find ways to hack your Gmail. And you don't want somebody to hack your Gmail just because you made your Gmail pretty damn easy to actually uh, hack. So make it unique, something unique to you, something maybe in your language that is not normally spoken in where you are so once you've got your username and password you are going to now uh, redirect it to this page which is where we are right now you're now going to enter your phone number and your recovery email both are optional for this you don't necessarily have to enter them but it is good if you ever lose your password or you can't remember what it is you google will send you uh a link that will allow you to reset your, your, your password so that you can access your Gmail again. So it's very, very important that you think about 
whether you, if, you you can decide not to put anything here where it says phone number and where it says recovery, recovery email. But if you ever lose your password and you can't remember it, Google has a couple of other ways to then reach you and help you to reset your password. So we're going to put my number here. We're going to assume this is my number. Okay, so I'm going to miss the recovery email bit because I'm going to delete. This is a test, uh, test Gmail account and we're going to delete it. Now, date of birth. Now, you will definitely be required to add your date of birth because there are legal requirements on certain age restrictions and uh, Google expects you to be at least above the age of 15. And so we'll just add this date of birth right here. We're going to add, okay, we'll assume I'm 23 or something. Uh, gender, you can choose to add your gender. You can choose to say you'd rather not say. You can choose to say custom gender. You know, people. there are people who are uh, non-binary, for instance. So you, you, you put what you want to put there. Then you're going to click on next. And you can ask why you're being asked that information. You have a right to know. But we're going to click on next because we're going through the basics. Right. So now they really now want you to put your number or email so they can verify that you are a human. That's why we had a problem before. So they're going to send a code to my number. And uh, obviously, I'm not really wanting to verify this because I'm going to delete it. But for purposes of getting this done, we will definitely be deleting this. So that's for sure. You can go through all that, but because I'm going to delete this, I'm going to skip all that. Uh, make Google services including ads relevant to you, blah, blah, blah. You can decide that you're in or not because Google wants to send you all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to say I'm in for purposes of this so that you can see some of the things that Google does for you in the interface. And then hopefully it's not going to say that whole thing again. Now, you can personalize your settings. Uh, you can do the express personalization which is one step where you google chooses what they tell her for you or you can go manual because you are new and you're struggling with the digital stuff you don't want to go manual because you have to go through all the five steps so you click express personalization and you click next you're now in control of oh, well google is telling you you're in control but we all know what that means right <laughs> so what then happens is that you have the terms and conditions. You can read all those. I'm not going to read them. I've read them every time I've created a client's email. And you confirm that you, you agree with Google's privacy settings. You agree to all that good juice. And then here you are. Google welcomes you to your new profile. Google redirects you to your new uh, Gmail home home page which is your where you when you log into your gmail this is what you see uh oh google is always trying to help you with your uh, with your navigation and leveraging the resources they offer you i always say continue with smart features because otherwise it, it deletes and disables this dis disables some things and makes it difficult for you to do some stuff we're going to just click on continue with smart features and say next for this i always say use limited version because i'm not really personalizing anything but if you want to, help, to allow Google to help you with your bills, to uh, show you restaurant renovations, so for to travel stuff, then you can click on that. But I usually say use limited version. Uh, the following features are, uh, are more will be turned off until you change your mind. Yes, turn of features. So here you are in your new brand spanking new Gmail account. This is what you see on day one. What Google does, it bunches up everything into three or four uh, different tabs for you. We have the primary, the social, the promotional, and the forums. Now, so now you have your primary features, your social features, and your promotional features, which are tabs, uh, tabs that I was talking about. Your primary is typically where you find most of your generic emails from people that you have added as your contacts, from people who are your friends, your family, or people that you email regularly. Google will assume you want to see their content and information inside your primary tab, unless that information is highly promotional. It looks like marketing or advertising, in which case it will put them under promotions or social. So your primary tab is where most of your email arrives and you will also, or, or the people you email regularly. And then your social tab is where messages from, say, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, messages from YouTube, messages from your social, uh, you know, your social activities online will usually show up here. If you connect this, your Gmail account, to your say, your Facebook account or your YouTube, 
uh, if you log into YouTube for any reason while with your account open, it will start to share with you YouTube, uh, you know, what it thinks you like to watch on YouTube in your social tab. And promotional content is typically adverts, promotional messages, anything Google considers that like it's marketing material, all that good stuff will show up inside this promotions tab. Otherwise, uh, and as you can see, they already are trying to show you some adverts right there. And uh, they, 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 they will show up here because they are adverts. They are trying to get you to actually click on those, but they will never show up under your primary tab. So they show adverts will show up under social and promotional, but usually they don't show up under your primary tab. The Google will encourage you to customize your inbox, uh, to import your email contacts if you have other email contacts anywhere else. Uh, for instance, in Yahoo or in Outlook, they'll encourage you to email those contacts, but the only way to email, email those contacts is via uploading a CSV file, and we are doing basic essentials here today. And you can get Gmail for your mobile as well. You can add it to your uh, phone and add your Gmail account to your phone, and you're able to log in and log out and do stuff on your phone as well. And also go onto YouTube on your phone without having to log in ever again. But you know what we you know, you know what we talked about earlier about that. So, um, you can go into your inbox settings and consolidate all these primary social and promotions into your primary folder. But like again, we're only looking at the basics today, so I don't want to confuse you with all that stuff. So let's look at creating an email, right? <clears throat> In order to create an email, you, you, you simply need to go to that tab that says Compose. You click on that and it will open up a little uh, pop-up box, usually on the extreme right bottom of your PC or laptop. And you can switch between uh, signatures as they're trying to tell you, but you know you just dismiss that because again, that will confuse you. So stick to the basics. First, the question is, and by the way, you can expand this and it becomes a proper full pop-up box. And you can click on that to actually push it back to where it got was before which is down at the bottom so we're gonna open it out so we can see bigger what we are doing right so you are gonna have to enter the email of the person that you're emailing so let's assume you're emailing rosemary uh, at gmail what is what is the topic what are, why are you sending them this email in this case we are going to say my new gmail account because we are alerting uh, rosemary of our new gmail account right and uh, so what is the body or the message of what you're saying? You add that here. And by the way, you can add several people. You can add Julie at gmail.com. You can add Rachel at gmail.com. When you enter, it, it enters that as an email. You can add Rachel. You can add CC means you want someone else to receive the email. And Rosemary and Julie will both know that you've sent them an email. So we'll add Vero at gmail.com and then you can decide that you are actually so decide that you want to BCC to add somebody to this email and you don't want the other three the other rosemary julie and veronica to know you've sent them an email so you decide that sorry right back to here so you can when you BCC it means that you actually don't want veronica rosemary or julie to know that you're sending you're adding this person to the email so you can decide to add uh, Kelechi, so you've added them, and now once you enter, that means that shows that these are now valid emails and they are going to send them. You're going to send them, Hey guys, this is my brand new Gmail account. I'm not letting digital staff bully me. You can add right here at the bottom. Uh, is where your formatting is. You can add your emojis where you decide that you're, you're laughing because you are wanting them to know that you're, you're not being bullied by digital staff anymore and you're cool. Uh, you can also add, you can add links. You can say that visit warden.org.uk. They told me all this cool stuff. And then now when you do that, if you want that to be an active link, you can use this formatting and you click on this little insert link and it will automatically turn that into an active link. And let's change that. It says wording. It's wording. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can also correct by changing or you can remove that link by clicking on the link. So for purposes of this, we are going to leave it on. And you can also attach files. So this is inserting link. The little, uh, what's it called, is for attaching files, right? The one right next to it, that functionality. 
So let's assume we want to attach uh, <coughs> a picture, any picture will do, to be honest. So, and then you've made an attachment, you added an attachment to your email. And then you also add another little, say, heart. You can add a heart or you can add a, a cookie. Someone's sticking out their nose out. And then you sign off. Oh, the best holding blog. You can also change the color of that text right there by clicking on that A over here. And when you click on the T, uh, you can change that to large font. When you click on that A with an underline, under, you can actually change that to red text. There are two things. You can either click send and that email will go to all those people, right? And uh, we're going to do two things. We're going to send and unsend. There is also something you can do. You can delete this email. You can discard this as a draft because it's already auto Gmail automatically saves your email as a draft as you type. Once you enter the emails of the people you're sending it to, it automatically starts to save it as a draft. We are definitely saving this. Uh, we are not going to save it, obviously. So we can discard it. But I want to show you something cool uh, that you, you can do with Gmail. If you have made a mistake and you feel like, oh my goodness, I've sent it to the wrong person, or oh my goodness, I said the wrong thing in that email, you literally have five seconds to unsend that email. And remember now, we don't know all these people, Rosemary, Julie, Vero, Kelechi, all those are active emails on, on, on actually Gmail because it hasn't rejected them as false. Well. The ones you saw that it were not active Gmails, Gmail was showing them as red. So these are real people with real emails. So we're going to send it and unsend it and I'm going to show you a cool trick. So you click send and then you can click undo right there. Sending undone. So if you do it pretty quickly in less than five seconds, you can unsend an email that you've sent to people that you were wrong or you sent the wrong message. So you literally, literally have five seconds to do that. After that, the message is gone and you can never ever retrieve it. So let's delete this again. I'm going to show you how to delete the message. And that's as simple as that. It's simply deleted and you, you, you literally, uh, you have done that. So now we've done attachments, we've done links, we've seen drafts. Um, and the other place to look at drafts is right here. On your left side is a navigation panel. That shows you all the stuff. Now, if we had saved the other email, you would have found it here. I should have shown you that it's here before I deleted it. So let's assume I'm doing another email. As you can see, immediately it shows up here as a draft. So if you were busy or, or someone knocks on your door while you're busy doing your email, you can pop on over, uh, do what they need, listen to them, sort out what you need to sort out and come back. And you click on your draft and it opens and you complete what you were doing. So that's a cool thing with Gmail. And uh, if you sent it, if we had sent that email, we're not going to do anything with this email. So we're going to delete it as well. Um, you find all your sent emails here in this folder. We don't have anything that we've sent to anybody. As you can see, we did not send it. So it's not showing up here. Inbox, we can actually reply. We can reply to emails uh, that people have sent to us. For instance, if, right, if I clicked on that and, and I wanted to reply, all I would do is click on reply right here on Google Community Team. I click on reply there and then I am able to send them a reply. You see, this is the body of my reply to them. I can attach something uh, like an image. Uh, I can attach an image or a file, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet. I can add a link. I can make that a link and turn and add the uh, and immediately becomes a link. I can add emojis even in my reply. So a reply is simply an email replying to an email that's been sent to you. So it works exactly the same way. And again, you can send it or simply uh, by clicking that. You know, it's a bit slow today. I don't know why. And we're not sending it, so we're just gonna. Sometimes some e e emails are spam. If I felt like this email was spam. I would simply select that box right there and click on report spam. Now, obviously, Google Community is not spam, so I'm not going to say it is spam. But anytime you receive an email that you suspect that you really did not uh, ask for, you don't know the person, you don't really want to open it, check that box 
click that little tiny report um, uh, you know, uh, exclamation mark and report it. And once you click that and reported it as spam, it will give you an opportunity to delete it forever. We're not going to do that to this email because obviously it is not okay. And there's nothing in the promotions folder to check out and say it is spam. If we scroll down here, you'll find your bin messages that you deleted from your inbox, from your send folder are kept. Anything from the draft does not actually come to your bin because it was never actually, the assumption it was never created, it was never sent. If you check your, if you are receiving a lot of spam emails that you did not ask for, they will usually be in this folder that says spam, okay? And all it, it, you always find them on this navigation panel. So it's as simple as that and easy to do. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like what you have seen and have learned something from it. If so, be sure to share, to subscribe, and of course to head on to our website, wardin.org.uk. The link is below in the description. And check out our services for grassroots, social organizations, and voluntary organizations. And uh, until next time, I wish you a great day ahead. Thank you for watching. God bless you.